Okay, so this sort of video is about anaerobic respiration, or as I've just found out off the interweb, uh, more correctly called fermentation. Anaerobic respiration is uh, something that obligate anaerobes do that's uh, apparently quite different. There's something interesting for you. Anyway, you can find that out yourselves. Uh, so, as far as your syllabus is concerned, anaerobic respiration uh, is what happens if there is no oxygen present. So, if there is no oxygen present, our organism can still do glycolysis. So, we can still start with glucose. I'm going to shortcut this horrifically. And they can make pyruvate. And all that can happen in glycolysis and there's no oxygen required. Now obviously in glycolysis we're producing reduced NAD or NADH and per molecule of glucose um, glycolysis produces two NADH and normally they will go off to the electron transport chain and each NADH entering will release an electron and a proton and the electron will go through the electron transport chain and pump protons across and you'll get three ATP per NADH. If there is no oxygen available then that obviously can't happen because oxygen is the terminal electron acceptor in the electron transport chain and um, without the oxygen there to accept the protons and electrons at the end then that can't happen. So that uh, leaves uh, organisms with a bit of a problem. So remember that also overall despite the fact that you've put two in at the beginning You've also got a net gain of 2 ATP at the end of glycolysis. So you are still releasing some usable energy out of that process. Now, I think in an exam, if you have to describe the reactions of anaerobic respiration, you need to fill in the detail of glycolysis, and I can refer you to our earlier video on that. Um, so that's fine and you just you need to know that and you need to be able to describe the use of ATP and the release of NADH and the release of the ATP and the making of pyruvate. But if there is no oxygen present or more generally not enough oxygen present then you've got to be able to, I'll just go back to my orange pen, you've got to be able to get your NAD back to Put in here so that you can take the hydrogen away from the glucose because otherwise you're not going to get your um, net gain of 2 ATP. So in all sorts of anaerobic respiration the main point is to recycle the NADH to NAD so glycolysis can continue. And the reason that you would want to do that is that you would gain 2 ATP per molecule of glucose. you're aspiring. So you just ca carry on, you know, gaining some ATP. <coughs> just not the 38 that uh, you might want. So, there are two sort of uh, anaerobic respiration pathways. We'll start with the easy one. So the one that you're most familiar with is the one that results in lactate. So, 
types of organisms that do this, we're talking uh, animals, that includes us obviously, and bacteria which obligingly make yoghurt out of milk by that method. Which is why yoghurt tastes sour because it's got lactic acid in it. So the relationship between pyruvate and lactate is that pyruvate takes the hydrogen of NADH and releases NAD. So you're actually joining the hydrogen back to the pyruvate. How you would put this in an exam is that you would say that the NADH reduces pyruvate. So remember, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. The pyruvate has gained that hydrogen to lactate. And again, you know, in a longer answer, perhaps an essay or uh, you know, sort of something for four or five marks, you would need to describe the reactions of glycolysis as well. So that's what happens in animals and bacteria. Uh, lactate is the people who did the um, musculoskeletal anatomy option will know is the one that fatigues muscle. Um, so obviously you can't have too much acid building up in your muscles. We've also got, and um, because it's Friday, this is, you know, a beloved subject of mine. We have plants and fungi who do something different. So what plants and fungi do is they do a two-stage process. So stage one, they produce ethanol. And again, my sort of, you know, life advice to you today is to be very careful. If your A's in your normal handwriting look a little bit like O's or your handwriting's a little bit small and can't be seen on the computer screen very well. Why not capitalise those last two letters so that the examiner is absolutely sure uh, that you know what you're talking about. That ethanol is then converted into ethanol. So again, you know, capitalise it because it's important that that relationship is correct. So, um, as the chemists amongst us will know, ethanol is a two carbon compound and of course we know that pyruvate is a three carbon compound. Wherever we're going in respiration reactions from three carbons to two carbons, the enzyme that does that is decarboxylase. And so here we're going to make some carbon dioxide as, our, as an end product. Uh, I'll just remind you that that's a decarboxylation reaction. And you're thinking, hmm, hang on a minute, she's still not got rid of her NADH. So that comes in here. So our NADH, just using the curly arrow there which describes that hydrogen being attached, reducing the ethanol. So again, when you're describing, you need to describe the decarboxylation reaction, making ethanol, and then you need to describe that um, a transfer, the reduction reaction. So in this case, our NADH is being used up. NADH reduces ethanol. to ethanol. So types of organisms that do this, we're looking here at plants. So if you imagine rice in a paddy field, it's, you know, its roots are underwater, they're not getting any oxygen, they will be churning out ethanol. Not that I suggest that you go and drink the water out of a paddy field, it would be disgusting. Um, and, of course, fungi, for example, yeast. I would also remind you that alcohol is a toxin.
and uh, actually you can only make so much alcohol using yeast because it just poisons itself once the alcohol reaches a certain concentration. Very toxic, don't try it at home.